This video is about Minim OSD. I'll share with you what I've learned from my many hours of experimentation with this remarkable and inexpensive bit of gear, including what I think is the best version of the firmware, the screens I use, how I overcame flicker and dropout, and some interesting findings about different types of cameras and how they work with the Minim OSD. I found this version on GitHub, and I'll put a link in the description, that incorporates an integrated character loader, so no separate flash and reflash is required to get the correct and updated symbols. It also includes a T-Log player that lets you check your settings by simply hooking up the video output while the FTDI flasher is still attached. These two features alone make this version of MinimOSD much more user-friendly and easier to tweak. I typically fly with three screens. In this version, there are four. I thought with the fourth I could set up a special screen just for the failsafe, but I haven't done it yet. My standard flight screen covers the basics and provides relevant data for normal flight without too much clutter. The location data is important to me in case of a mishap. I generally fly using absolute altitude because that's what I like. My landing and approach screen tells me everything I need to know for landing, even if it were pitch black out. I came up with this screen after a very exciting landing during an evening flight I did a while ago. I had high hopes for the ILS portion of this new firmware, but either I don't know how to read it or it doesn't work very well. This version of the OSD includes a radar. Personally, I'm not a big fan of radar. I gave it a try for a couple of flights, but didn't really see the point since I have a home arrow. Maybe it will be useful with ADS-B receivers or for formation flying with data connected vehicles. You'll notice in this footage that I have to stretch the OSD frame for it to line up and it also seems to shift the video a bit depending on the camera. This definitely started as a power problem, but since I've been going through all my footage, I now believe there is added instability because of the resolution and frame sizes the non-board cameras are trying to push through the OSD. It's the only thing that explains the flickering since I've cleaned up the power as much as possible. Then I realized I don't need the OSD when I'm looking through these cameras. I like it, but I don't need it. So when I do my rebuilds this winter, I'll bypass the OSD for all but the flight camera and see if that makes a difference. Combined with the super clean power systems I've developed and will be installing in my latest build, which you can check out here, this should solve my OSD dropout problems. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you'd like to see more.